We're throwing vibranium shields and growing beards in Wakanda. That's right, it's Thanos Rising from USAopoly. This co-op quest for the fate of the galaxy pits two to four players against the arch villain Thanos. Thanos, 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 Thanos. And his plans to obtain all six infinity stones. Not on our watch, Thanos. Setup begins with the Infinity Gauntlet and the six Infinity Stone cards nested around it. Place the Infinity Stones on each card of their color and the yellow Infinity Stone counters nearby. Set all the dice, the red damage counters, and the bonus tokens face down within reach. Next, put the Deployment Zone Center and place Thanos in the middle, randomly facing one of the three sectors. Each player then chooses a team and takes the team card, matching deployment token, and starting hero known as the team leader. The remaining hero and 10 villain cards are combined and shuffled to create your asset deck placed near the deployment zone. Deal 9 cards face up in the 3 sectors. The players are working to defeat 7 of the 10 villains in the deck before Thanos gains too much power. This target number can be raised depending on the difficulty level you want for your game. The players win once they defeat the target number of villains, but Thanos gets three win conditions. If he gathers all six Infinity Stones onto his gauntlet, if he defeats a total of ten heroes, or if he completely eliminates one team. Players spend their turns recruiting new heroes and attacking villains, while Thanos attacks back and slowly gains power. The player who most recently watched a Marvel movie goes first and play proceeds clockwise. Each player follows the turn order handily listed on the back of their team base card. First, the active player places their deployment token in one of the sectors, and this will represent the sector that team will explore this turn. Next, the active player rolls the Thanos and Infinity Stone dice. The Infinity Stone dice represents Thanos increasing control over the stones. Each color side rolled in a turn adds a counter to that stone. If a stone receives its fifth counter, Thanos gains the stone and a new power, which activates the next time that color is rolled. The Thanos die represents Thanos' actions and control of his villainous forces. Depending on the roll, the players may have to rotate Thanos left or right to the next sector, keep Thanos in place but roll the Infinity Stone die an additional time, or keep Thanos in place and activate the villains not in his sector. During this phase, Thanos attacks each hero in the sector he is facing, including heroes on the active team if their deployment token is in his sector. After damage is dealt, any villains in that sector also activate, triggering their ability. Assigning damage to a hero or villain is marked with a red damage counter on the health bar in the top right. Once a hero has reached their capacity of their health in damage counters, they will be defeated and discarded, but not until the end of the turn. This means you still have one last ditch chance to recruit them before they did. After resolving the Thanos and Infinity Stone dice, the active player now collects and rolls their power dice. Their starting pool is located on their team card and can be augmented by recruiting other heroes that each have their own individual abilities, like adding more dice or changing a die roll. The active player then examines the results of their opening roll and must assign at least one or more dice to match the symbol on any one asset card in the sector. Once assigned, the dice cannot be moved or re-rolled for the turn. If the player cannot assign a die to a card in the sector, they have to forfeit one die from the pool. After either assigning or forfeiting, the player re-rolls the remaining dice in an attempt to get the right symbols until they assign all dice or no dice remain in their pool. Assigning dice to a card and completing the requirements either recruits a hero to the active player's team or damages a villain. When recruiting a hero, the player gets to remove any existing damage on that hero and add them on the team. Damaging a villain adds a damage counter and grants the player a bonus token from the supply. Bonus tokens are some really great anytime use symbols or bonus dice that players can share freely with their friends. Once a villain takes full damage, they're discarded and added to the total body count required to win the game. Empty spaces in the deployment zone are refilled from the asset deck, the active player takes their deployment token back, and the turn passes to the next player. If players defeat enough villains before before Thanos collects his infinity stones, kills 10 heroes, or defeats a whole team, the players win. That's all you need to know. I'm Becca Scott, and the best Marvel character of all time is Korg. Come at me, nerds. You can watch me play this game and other awesome games with my friends on Game the Game right here on Geek and Sundry. We'll see you there. Korg is the best Marvel character. Hands down.
Take it with Didi.